Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about the Seeker's Guiding Star. Just as in life, the spiritual journey has lots of distractions. Life in general, there's lots of distractions and it's just the same for spiritual seekers. We can lose our way in all the various things that catch our eye. <laughs> and so just like travelers and sailors of old would always keep their heading on the guiding star, the pole star, the north star, all synonyms. They would keep their eye on that star so they wouldn't lose their way. And I think for spiritual seekers, those interested in non-duality, awakening, enlightenment, it's important to keep your eye on the guiding star. And the guiding star is simply the self. Ramana Maharshi focused a great deal on self-inquiry and the basic question, who am I? This is a very important question. Who am I? What am I really right now? Even in the, the temples of old Greece, above the door, they would, there would be the inscription, know thyself. It is kind of the, the root of all spirituality. To, to delve into and realize who and what you really are. And in this sense, anything else is a distraction. Until you realize who and what you really are, everything else is kind of superfluous. <laughs> For example, um, early in my spiritual journey, I spent a great deal of time in past life regressions. Mostly for in a healing slant, it was a healing paradigm. But none of this gets you any closer to realizing what you who and what you really are. They will give you ideas of what you were <laughs> and the significance of it, but it doesn't tell you what you are right now because what you are right now is in the present it can't be found in the past knowing who and what you are is a present ever present knowing it's not knowledge knowledge is of the past it's conceptual knowledge can't touch it and so in this ever-present knowing, inherently non-conceptual, of who and what you are, and uh, the self, basically. Delving into the past is no better than digging into your wallet to try and looking up your ID and saying, this is me. <laughs> it doesn't help, because anything your IDs can tell you in your wallet really is not who you are. That pertains to particulars of the character in the body, but that's not really who you are. And so, you know, I, I in, in looking in hindsight, all that time spent in past life regression, I can clearly see, did not help me realize who I am. It was just past content. It was like looking through photo albums of, oh, this is, this is where I was. Doesn't help. Or looking at the ID in your wallet. Doesn't help. Or, you know, there's other things in spirituality. Some people are very much, uh, you know, seekers of spiritual experiences. They're always looking for the next experience. Well, all these experiences are great. But do they really tell you who you are? And I would say no. <laughs> so when you are kind of wondering what to do, or maybe you've got all the, you're doing all these different spiritual practices and you're doing all these various things, you might want to reassess by looking at what you're doing and really looking at it. Does this tell me who I am now? 
And if it doesn't, very likely it's just another distraction. In terms of if you if if the if the whole root, if the whole point of spirituality is to know thyself, to realize the self, then anything else would be um, a distraction. And so not getting you any closer to that. And so in that way, many things in spirituality can be reassessed as kind of a side game that, that doesn't help the actual goal. And in that way, you might cut down some of the distractions and remove some of the distractions and go, well, I'm a, I'm a pull back on past life regression, for example. I don't need to spend so much time worrying about what had happened. I need to know what I am now. <laughs> and so it's a different way to re perhaps reframe or reassess. Or if you're thinking about starting another spiritual practice or doing something, you might want to look at it and go, will this really reveal what is already the case, which is recognizing what I am now and what I've always been. And this actually, I think, minimizes the, the number of, of practices a bit because, you know, like Ramana Maharshi, the only practice he really recommended was uh, self-inquiry. And so he would just keep pointing people back and turning them back onto that. They would come to him with questions like, who was I in my past life? And he would go, who are you now? He would never let you wiggle out of that basic question. Because even Ramana Maharshi got lots of questions that really came down to distractions. They did not matter in terms of if you are trying to realize the self, if you're trying to see who and what you really are now as an ever-present knowing, knowing the answers to those questions do, does not matter. <laughs> so in that way, you might be able to even cut back some of the questions that you may have. Because some people might go, well, I, I, I want to know, because I've actually had this happen, I want to know how the universe began. How did it all really begin? Does this, does knowing this help you know who you are now? No. <laughs> knowing how the universe began doesn't tell you who, who you are now. It's a distracting question. It's not relevant. And even if you knew the answer, what impact would that have in life now? Nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's one of these things where if you kind of keep your eye on the godding star, you keep going back to, who am I? What am I? And in this way, I'm, you know, I'm basically recommending and saying self-inquiry is the way or self-investigation, self-examination. Because, you know, when I talk about self-inquiry, I like talking about self-inquiry in terms of what Ramana Maharshi talked about, which basically was following the I thought to its source, which its purpose was to quiet the mind and then you just abide in silence. That was the whole purpose, self-inquiry. But when I talk about self-examination or, or self-investigation, you know, that's almost more of a netty netty approach. It's looking at whatever you think and feel yourself to be and looking at it deeply until you see clearly that you are not that. Seeing the false is false. And so if you think you are the body, well, you need to investigate that assumption in detail, in depth, until it is clearly seen. Well, no, I'm not the body. I've, I've exhausted every avenue of rationalization. It can't be the body anymore because, you know, I've looked, can't find it. <laughs> and so it's one of these things where you need to see the false as false. And, 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 that, and that's seeing the false me as false. Seeing misidentification as misidentification. And in that way, you're, you're peeling back the, the, uh, 
the incorrect, the incorrect answers of the question, who am I? You're getting rid of the incorrect answers that you've been holding on to. And in that way, you're opening the possibility for a new answer to come in. Because I think that's why it's so conducive to awakening. You know, well, I'm talking about self-inquiry being so conducive to awakening or self-investigation being so conducive to awakening is because for someone who is firmly convinced they already know who they are, it is very difficult, very difficult for them to, to, to come to terms or see that they are something else entirely. <laughs> so if they really believe I am the body, it is very difficult for them to recognize or realize that they are not the body because it's countering exactly, it's, it's exactly opposite of their belief. And the way the brain is rather clever is it tends to screen out and tint all information coming in. So everything you're noticing and, and seeing only seems to reinforce your basic assumptions. And so they're like, well, I, of course I'm the body for these reasons. But those are all mistaken assumptions. And so without questioning those assumptions, it's really hard to see past that. <laughs> And so that's why I think it's important, or that's why they say it's important to, you know, to see that you're not the body or not the mind, because these two things um, tend to more heavily veil or cloud self-realization because you're already attached or convinced you are something that you're not. And until you remove that, it's hard to see what you are. And so I would say self-investigation uh, self, you know, examination is cutting to the heart of the matter. Um, but in that way, other related practices are not really a distraction. So let's say someone wanted to practice detachment. Well, attachment is, is a, you know, a fundamental my and mine. And those ideas of my and mine fuel the me, and so it helps build the me. And so, in practicing detachment and eliminating my and mine, you're weakening or diminishing the, the me. And in, in that way, I would say practicing detachment isn't particularly a distraction because it's getting at the heart of. Uh, you know, maybe a little more indirectly, but basically it's still in the direction of let's diminish the me and realize what we really are. But I, I think it's far more valuable well practicing detachment to also know the whole point of it is to diminish the me and that you still need to look for or investigate what you really are. Because the, the basic question, who am I? Is, is is the whole thing. <laughs> know thyself. That is it. If you know who and what you are, it will fundamentally also give you the nature of reality, which releases you from suffering. Chronic suffering falls away. Because all of this suffering is based, a lot of it is based upon a me, an illusory me, with a whole lot of other um, concepts and beliefs built upon that and derived from that fundamental me. And that's what creates all the suffering. And that's why chronic suffering tends, you know, falls away um, after the illusion of me is shattered. And so this, these are the pointers in terms of the, uh, you know, pointing at the uh, the pole star going that's that's the direction that that is what the where the focus needs to be that's the direction you, you need to go of course the self is here so it's not there's really nowhere to go <laughs> but you know that's what I'm saying is you need to not get distracted by other things because if you are you know very much, trying to deal with whatever, um, you know, let's say law of attraction is a good one. 
a lot of people are very focused on law of attraction. They're trying to manifest things in life to improve their life. I want to manifest things in my life. Well, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But what you're really saying is manifesting things in my life has a lower priority. It's not as important as knowing who and what I am. <laughs> but if you're like, no, knowing who and what I am is most important. Well, then you don't need to spend so much time trying to manifest stuff because that's a distraction <laughs> because as you're busy trying to manifest things in your life you're not really looking at who and what you are that's time that can be better spent looking at looking for what you really are and in this way you can try to minimize some of the distractions of the spiritual search uh, not that you can't enjoy life as well I mean it's perfectly e easy to uh, be a householder yogi so to speak and still have a job and a family and still you know look for the self it doesn't need to be a full-time job you don't need to be a monk where you spend all day every day delving into the self i don't think that's particularly if efficient either <laughs> um because you know the it, it that kind of harder pushing you know things have to things kind of have to take time on their own a little bit um and so, you know, trying to force it by going, I'm going to spend every waking moment looking for who and why, what I am, in the exclusion of trying to get money or, or work or family. I'll just beg a little bit every day for food and I'll just live outside. Yeah, if, if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. But that doesn't have to be the case. I think that if we cut back some of the, some of the distractions of, of the spiritual search, some of the distractions of life, there is plenty of time to to look at who look for look at who and what you are and then i'll you know i'll kind of a, as a concluding point i'm also a bit more of a i come from a bit more of i guess a tantric philosophy in terms of i think all of all of life can be a spiritual practice and so you know if you know you're trying to diminish the self well practicing detachment in the world is is uh you know a very interesting thing if you just simply get rid of all your possessions and be a monk living out in a cave you may not really have gotten rid of your attachment because even just that robe and begging bowl you know monks and sadhus can become very attached to the few possessions they do have and so it's not a matter of just removing stuff out of your life you know when i'm talking about detachment it's not about removing stuff out of your life but it's no longer trying to cling on to it you're no longer basing your your happiness upon it remaining in your life you're letting it go and, it, and if and when you let it go it'll stay for as long as it does <laughs> you know eventually it's going to go away everything's impermanent knowing that everything's impermanent you know and in this way these are things you can do in life i think almost easier it's easier to to, to do the spiritual practice or, or working with impermanence and attachment and forgiveness and these things are easier to practice in life because you are interacting with this stuff all the time there is things that are happening that you're, you may find unforgivable. Well, now you've got something else to look at. But until so, until this happened, you didn't, you didn't know you had this sticking point <laughs> that you couldn't forgive. Until some, some a possession gets ripped away and you feel lost and you're upset. Until that happens, you didn't know you had that attachment. Um, you know, a, a sadhu or a monk in a cave, they don't interact with anybody. They don't have any possessions. So you don't really know if this stuff still exists or not <laughs> just simply removing people around you doesn't make you automatically all forgiving <laughs> because at some point if the sadhu or monk goes into the world and interacts with people and they do something to them and they find something unforgivable well then they've just not been looking at it the entire time so in this way I'm not saying you need to get out of life. Life itself can be a spiritual practice, and this is a 
this is more of a tantric viewpoint that everything in life can be used as spiritual practice you don't need to get away but what you need to do is reduce the number of distractions and know what you're going for and if enlightenment awakening self-realization you know non-duality if that's what you're going for the 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 absolute reality the ground of being however whatever t term you want to use if that's what you're going for is realizing that then you need to know that there are distractions that do not get you any further on that and so it kind of comes down to do you want to be distracted by all this other stuff never looking for who and what you are or do you want to cut away some of those distractions so you can spend more time looking for who and what you are because if you can spend at least a little bit of time regularly <laughs> you know just sitting still fully aware not really thinking and then and then also routine you know regularly you know looking at who and what you really are or looking see, noticing that you really that that due to reactions in the world it's like oh I, I i must believe i am this or maybe you you consciously realize i believe i am this well then you can look at it more deeply and see that you're not that and in this way other distractions can be peeled away be you know be it law of attraction past life regression you know I mean, if you want to spend some time doing that as well, that's fine. But it's a matter of you got to spend some time <laughs> regularly, consistently. You know, who am I? That is the question. If you are, if you are not regularly delving into the who am I question, either as inquiry, investigation, examination, you know, whatever, then you are not looking. And as long as you are not looking... Um, so to speak, to, to see who and what you really are, then you won't <laughs> in terms of um, it's less conducive. You know, for, for, you know, that's why there's these traditions. That's why there's um, Advaita and Yana Yoga and all these other traditions. They're all giving you basically practices to a certain large, large extent to look at who and what you are or diminish what you aren't. And a certain amount of you know if you are going to be a seeker of some of that kind of thing if you're going to call yourself a seeker you need to seek it which means you need to look and uh, if you're not going to bother looking well then you're not really a seeker of that so I don't know I guess in a nutshell that that guiding star will cut out a lot of the distractions but if you got any questions comments please post below but until next time thank you much